Hello everyone and welcome to the beginner's guide to simulations in Blender. This is going to be a series of beginner tutorials where we're going to cover the six simulations that Blender has to offer, starting out with the liquid simulation. After the first six videos, we're going to go into a more advanced series where we'll go through each one again, but this time we're going to create a more complex scene and learn more about the ins and outs of each simulation. So to start out, let's understand what a liquid simulation is. In Blender, fluid physics are used to simulate the physical properties of liquids. When you first create a simulation, it's going to have a particle effect on the top, as you can see there. And this is the way that it simulates fluid. After this, you can add mesh to it, so it's an actual physical thing that you can see, or you can use the particles and create some really cool simulations like this one. For every simulation in Blender, there are two things that you will always need. That being a domain object and a flow object. A domain defines the bounds of a simulation volume. No fluid will be able to exit outside of this domain. With the domain, you can set it to either collide with the edges or it'll just disappear once it hits the edge of the domain. Flow objects are used to emit fluid into the domain. This can either be a constant flow as you can see here, or you can have the exact size of the flow object be the amount of fluid that it's going to add. There are also effector objects which allow you to have collisions but these aren't necessary to create a liquid simulation. With that out of the way, let's jump into Blender and actually create this scene that you see here. So to get started, we'll use this default cube. We're not going to delete it this time. And this is going to be our domain object. And when working in Blender, you want to make sure that the scale is pretty large. You don't want to have something very small because Blender will have a hard time simulating that. So we're going to keep everything pretty large in the viewport. What I'll do is I'll open up the properties tab by hitting uh, N on my keyboard and I'm going to set the X dimensions all the way up to nine meters. Then for the Y and the Z, let's go up to five for both of these. I'm going to drag this up along the Z axis so it's sitting on the grid floor and now we're going to need a flow object. So again, with this cube selected, we'll hit shift D to duplicate it, scale it down just slightly then press S and then X and scale it along the X till it's a little bit smaller, somewhere around about two meters or so. We can set it exactly at two meters. And then we'll drag it over to the left side. For my simulation, I want this cube to be on the left to be a chunk of fluid that flows down here, collides with a couple of other objects, flows up here and does kind of like a wave. Now you can change up how you want your simulation to be. For example, if you want it to be in the middle and spread out along both sides, you can do that. You can have it floating, drop down. You can even have an object constantly add fluid. Do whatever fluid simulation you would like to create. Next, we're gonna need some collision objects. So I'm gonna press Shift A and go over to the mesh and then add in a cylinder. Now before you do anything else, let's open up this panel down at the bottom and set the number of vertices to a higher number so we get more resolution in the, uh, on along the edges, just like that. Let's set it to 128. Then I'll scale the whole thing down, then press S and Z and scale it up so it's pretty tall. Something like this. Then you can go into top view by hitting 7 on your number pad and positioning these how you want. So I might have one right there. One here, shift D to duplicate it, and I might place one more right there. That looks pretty good. Make sure that these are slightly below the bottom edge of the domain so there's no fluid that gets underneath. Something like that will look good. Next, a very important step is to make sure everything is set to scale. You're going to notice on the right side that all of our scale numbers are totally messed up. This is going to cause issues in the simulation when it's starting to calculate it. So go ahead and select everything, press Ctrl or Command A, and then select Scale. Now all of those numbers should go back down to 1. With that out of the way, we can go ahead and close that off. We're also not going to need the default lamp, so go ahead and delete that as well. Now let's work on the domain settings. So go ahead, select your domain object, jump over to the Physics Properties, select Fluid, and set the type over to Domain. The domain type at default is set to gas, which is used for fire and smoke. We're going to want to switch it over to the liquid settings. Now here are a lot of different options to change. So let's go through a couple of them and I'll be describing how they work. First off, the resolution divisions, that's pretty self-explanatory. That controls the resolution of the fluid simulation. 
Of course, higher numbers will look better, but it's going to take a lot longer to render. You can see a couple of different versions on screen now, and you can compare the different resolutions. For this scene, we're going to go with a value of 196. Now, this is quite a large number, um, but so if you have a slower computer, you may want to set this lower, like 128. That'll still look pretty good, but you're not going to get the level of detail with, without a higher value. Another way to look at the resolution in your domain is by looking at the bottom left corner. You're going to see a small cube right here, and the smaller this cube is, the higher the resolution is. For example, if I set this to 64, you're going to see it's a lot bigger. But the higher I go, the smaller it gets. Next up is the time scale. This controls the speed of the simulation. We're going to set this a bit lower, actually, because I noticed that the simulation looks pretty fast. We're going to go with a value of 0.85. The rest of the settings you don't really need to worry about. So we're going to scroll down to the liquid settings. Here we have the flip ratio. This value is important. What this controls is the amount of splashes that are going to be in the scene. Lower values tend to produce smaller and lighter splashes, whereas higher values tend, tend to produce a lot bigger splashes. So depending on what you want, you may want to lower it or raise it. The default value works pretty good for most simulations, so I'm just going to leave it at 0.97. The particle radius is another important thing that we will want to change. Currently it's set at 1, and this controls the radius around each particle. Meaning, since we have a high resolution of 196, there's going to be a lot of particles in our simulation. This will make it look like the simulation is actually gaining volume. So what we need to do to counteract that is to set the particle radius to a lower value. I've tested a couple of different scenarios and I've noticed that around 0.65 works pretty good. But again, you're going to have to test this. If it looks like it's gaining volume, set it lower. If it looks like it's losing volume, make sure to set it higher. For now though, we're going to open up the mesh and enable this. Since we want a mesh in our simulation, make sure that is checked. And then for the up-res factor, this controls how much up it will produce on the mesh. A value of 2 should work pretty good. As for the particle radius, this is similar to the particle radius in the liquid settings, except it's for the mesh. Higher values will make it look like there's kind of a blob around each of the uh, particles, and this doesn't look that great. We want the liquid to be sharp, so we're going to set this lower to a value of 1. As for the cache setting right here, one important thing I need to mention is this cache folder. You're going to see that the word temp is right there. This means that it's a temporary folder. So if you were to save your Blender file and open it up later, your simulation data will be gone. It'll be deleted because it's in a temporary folder. If you want to save this and open it up later, you're going to want to select the button on the right and then set a new destination. Keep in mind though, simulations tend to be pretty large in size, so you want to be careful with setting custom folders, or you want to make sure that you delete it later so you don't waste space on your hard drive. Since I don't really want to save my cache, I'm just going to leave it in the temporary folder, but for the end frame, I don't want to bake in 250 frames, so let's set this lower to around 180. Next up is the type. Currently, it's set on Replay. Replay allows you to preview your simulation in the viewport, but this is very, very slow, especially at a resolution of 196. We're not going to be able to see much at all when we try to play the simulation. Modular allows you to bake in different modules in your simulation. For example, we have a bake button right here. It allows us to bake in the base liquid settings. Then down here, we have another one for the mesh. So for example, if I want to change some of the settings in the mesh to make it look better, I can do that without affecting the original liquid settings. Since I want that flexibility, I'm going to set it on modular and then I'm also going to enable is resumable. This allows you to pause the bake at any point and resume it later, which is useful just in case you want to stop it, preview it, so you don't have to bake in all 180 frames. With that done, let's select our flow object. We're going to enable fluid, set the type over to flow, and then for the flow type, we don't want smoke, we're going to want to switch it over to liquid. The flow behavior controls what it actually is doing, and currently it's set on geometry, which is the one that we want. So that means that this amount of liquid will be added to our scene. If we were going to set it over to inflow, it would constantly add fluid based on the size of the mesh. 
So I'm going to leave it on geometry. Finally, for the collision objects, go ahead and select your cylinder, enable fluid, switch it over to effector, and that's all we really need to do. Let's do that for all of these so they all collide with the fluid. With that done, we are ready to bake this in. So go ahead and select your domain and just double check that all the settings are changed to what you want. Mine look pretty good. So at the very top, we're gonna click on bake data. Once the simulation has finished baking, just scroll through and make sure it all looks good. If you are happy with the results, we can come over to the domain settings down in the mesh and then click on bake mesh. Once this is done, we will set up our scene. The simulation has finished baking, so let's scroll through here and make sure everything looks good. As you can see there, that's a good frame. There is a ton of really nice detail in the fluid and we are good to go. So next up, we need to set up our scene. First, we need to select our cube on the left here. We don't want this to show up in the render, so go ahead and hide it from the view and hide it from the render by clicking that little camera icon. Next, let's add in a ground plane. I'm gonna press Shift A, add in a plane, scale it up a little bit, and then on the back here, I want to extrude this edge out. So go into edit mode, and then in edge select mode, select that edge on the back, E to extrude, drag it up along the Z axis, and then with this edge here, we can bevel it by hitting Control B, dragging our mouse out a little bit, and then using the scroll wheel to add in more segments, just like that. For the camera, I'm gonna position my view in the front by hitting one on the number pad, and then I'll hit Control Alt Numpad Zero to snap the camera into place, select it in the outliner, and you can press the G key, middle mouse button, and drag it outwards. Something like this will look good. Now to format this so it actually looks good on social media like Instagram, I want to change the resolution. So jumping over to the scene panel, I'm gonna set both the X and Y to one, uh, 1000, so it's a square uh, frame, just like this. I'll zoom in and place it like that. I'm gonna scale up the plane so it doesn't show that top, and there we go, we now have our camera set up. Next, I'm going to select my domain object, which is the fluid, I'm gonna press Shift D, and then right click to snap it into place. It might freeze for just a second, but then what you can do is come over to the physics properties and then just get rid of the fluid, just like that. So now we have a cube that's on the outside of our fluid. This I want to look like it's a uh, object that's containing the fluid. Right now though, if we go into wireframe by hitting Z, you're gonna notice that there's a small gap between where the fluid is and where the cube is. So to fix that, I'm gonna press S then X and scale it along until it reaches right about there then S and Y and scale it out this way until the fluid just barely touches it, just like that. Next, I want to turn this into a wireframe, so I'm gonna jump over to the modifier tab, add in a new modifier, generate, and then select wireframe. And then you can play around with the thickness until you find something that you like. There we go. So we're kind of faking a box that the fluid is inside of. Next, select your domain, right click and shade it smooth, and this will get rid of all of the faces that are uh, visible if we zoom in, which is good. And then finally, the material for this, we're gonna jump over to the material tab, change this from the principled shader over to a glass shader. The roughness will set all the way to zero, and then for the IOR, which stands for index of refraction, it's basically how light passes through uh, glass, we're gonna set this to 1.333. And then for the color, you can set this to whatever you want. I'm gonna go with a slight blue color. To see what this looks like, let's press Z and go into the rendered preview. You're gonna notice it does not look that great. So first off, for the lighting, I'm just gonna bring the color of the world up just a little bit, and then I'm gonna add in a sun lamp. So press Shift A, go over to lamp, our light, and then select the sunlight. Rotate it so that the shadow is pointed in this direction. Something like that will look good. Now our scene still does not look that great. So let's jump over to the EV settings and change it. First off, I'm gonna turn on ambient occlusion so we get some shadows in the corners. I'm gonna turn on screen space reflections and then turn on refraction. That's very important that you do. You turn that on and then if we select our domain once again in the material tab, 
and these settings down here, if we turn on screen space refraction, it should work properly. There we go. Now we can actually see through the glass. Another tip to make this look a lot better is if we open up the color management tab and underneath the look, if we set this to a very high contrast, that'll give us a much better look as well. I might set the color slightly darker, something like that. And then for the lamp settings, we'll set this up to a value of three. There we go. Now we have some nice contrast. One thing that we need to change is the wireframe. Currently it's using the same material as the liquid, which is not what we want. So over in the material tab with the wireframe selected, go ahead, delete that, and then add in a new material. For this, I'm just gonna go with a nice dark uh, black color, something like that, and then bring the roughness down to 0.1. I also want these cylinders in the middle to share that material. So I'm gonna select all of them and then select the wireframe last. So it's the active object, hit control L and then click on link materials. That should copy the material that's on the wireframe and put it for the cylinders. Let's check it out in the camera view by hitting zero on the number pad. And that is looking pretty good. One last material that we will do before we render it out is the ground plane. I'm gonna create a new material for the ground and just set the roughness down to 0.1. This will give us some nice reflections in the floor just like that. Now, since we are rendering in Eevee, it's not gonna look as good as if we were to render in Cycles. And you can see these side-by-side -side comparisons right now. Eevee will render much faster, but Cycles will look a lot better. And that's basically all you need to do for your simulation. So now go ahead and render it out. And you can do this by jumping over to the Output tab, setting an output right here to a folder of where you want to save it. And I'm gonna switch the file format over to an MPEG and set it over to MP4, and then the output quality, I'm gonna go with high. Normally, I would render this as an image sequence and then sequence it out later, but since this is gonna render very quickly, I don't really need to set it as a PNG sequence. And the very last thing is the end frame. We need to set this to 180 to match the end frame in our simulation. And with that done, we can go ahead and render it out. Go up to the Render tab right here and click on Render Animation. But there we go, guys. That is how you create a basic fluid simulation. Thank you very much for watching. If you created something from this tutorial, make sure to post it on Instagram and tag me at BlenderMadeEasy. Make sure to subscribe because in the next tutorial, we'll be creating a basic fire simulation.